we're back in Wales and it is just delightful. I love this country so much. Um, incredible landscapes and I'm doing something just a little bit different this week actually. Um, I'm still gonna be getting stuck into some landscape photography like always, but I've been reading a book. I've been reading a book recently written by a guy called Nicholas Crane, um, who apparently is very famous, especially here in the UK, but I'd never heard of him. I think he's on television and stuff here. This book is called The Making of the British Landscape. And I'm only about a quarter of the way through the book. I'm being very impulsive, but it's really inspiring me. And without going into too much detail, because I would recommend the book, it's, it's like I say, I'm only a quarter of the way through, but it's fantastic. Um, it's essentially a, a sort of account of how the British landscape came about since the Ice Age, which I think was about 20,000 years ago. Um, so it's really, really interesting. There's a lot that I didn't know. I'm learning a lot from it. But what's relevant to this week is the Neolithic period here in Britain, which is something that obviously I've heard of, but I never knew anything about it. And the Neolithic period is essentially, well, I'll give you one word, Stonehenge. Um, it's a very, very famous um, monument or tourist destination here in Britain. And I am heading up to a stone circle this evening. It's not going to be quite as glamorous or large as Stonehenge, but as you can see, it's incredibly remote and I would much prefer this than um, being with a coach load of people somewhere that I think you have to pay and you can't even go near it. So this is spot on for me. Um, and yeah, going up to the, one of these stone circles, I haven't been to one of these since I was a kid. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to share some of my knowledge from this book with you guys. I don't know why, but like I say, it's a bit of an impulse um, to this awesome book that I'm reading. And of course, oh, a bit of landscape photography as well. I'm really hoping I can get a decent photograph of it. It's a beautiful evening. The weather is a bit of a mix, really. I had a bit of rain on the way here. Um, outbreaks of light and sunshine every now and again, which is top draw. Awesome conditions for landscape photography, though. So. Let's head up to our stone circle now, see what it's got to offer. Welcome to this incredible Welsh stone circle. Um, this is absolutely sensational. You can see the weather, there's a few ominous clouds in the background over there. A um, few outbreaks of light in that direction. Quite a lot of detail in the sky. This is incredible and what a subject this is. Um, let me just put it into perspective for you guys because you know what? At the end of the day, this is just a pile of rocks, but this is, this is incredible. At the very least, this was built in the early Bronze Age. Yeah, so we're talking about 3,000 years ago, at the very least. Maximum, you know, at the most, this could have been built about 7,000 years ago and it stood the test of time. That just, I don't know about you, but that just blows my mind. This is just incredible, absolutely amazing. So, real atmosphere up here. Um, something quite special when you come to one of these places. L absolutely love how remote it is here, it's incredible. You can tell that whoever built this, you know, whatever group of people built this up here, they wanted it to be in a prominent position up here on the landscape. You can see for miles around, it is just sensational. So, of course, for us as landscape photographers, that is an absolute bonus, that is a benefit for us. And I'm gonna try and make something of it. Uh, we're about 40 minutes till the sunset. Like I said, a few stormy clouds knocking about, um, hoping we get a little bit of light, but for the next probably five or 10 minutes, I'm just gonna wander around the circle um, try my best to figure out some sort of composition, some sort of way in which I, I can shoot this. Um, I'm probably going to go for this, uh, as you can see now in the background, um, back towards these mountains here. That's looking like the most interesting viewpoint. But yeah, exciting stuff.
Okay, I really hope you guys can see me and the stone circle all right. Um, I think recently in my videos, I've been focusing a little bit too much on the video content and not enough on the photography. Here comes the rain. Um, however, this is creating the photo, this is making the photograph here. I'm gonna get the waterproof out, just give me one second. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this weather's coming in now. Um, it's a bit grim up here, but I think it's gonna be worth it for this photograph. Um, so basically what we're getting here, quite like my Scots Pine Island photograph that I got at Loch Marie in Scotland, we're getting two sets of weather fronts. Here in the foreground, as you can tell, we've got ominous clouds, um, hammering it down with rain here already. It's windy, it's dark, it's dull. In the background, we've got this sort of white light off in the, in the distance which I can only assume is being filtered through the clouds. And then right off in the background, we've got some silhouetted mountains, which looks, uh, they look absolutely incredible. ISO 100, F11, and what are we talking here? 116 of a second. The shut speed is not massively important here, to be honest. Um, just got to make sure I get the correct exposure. Uh, everything's getting soaking wet. I've got my three stop ND grad filter on just to bring down that sky a little bit. Like say it's dull here in the foreground, but in the back, uh, sorry, in the sky, it's fairly bright. So it's nice to be able to bring that down a little bit just to balance out the exposure. Uh, the exposure. But yeah, it's it's the obvious shot. It's the obvious composition. You know, I've got the, the stone circle itself here in the bottom third of the photograph, dead center. And then it just leads off into the background. I'm focusing on um, the stone circle, simple as that guys. So. I need to get this stuff in the bag. Um, I really hope you like this photograph. <laughs> that was carnage. So apologies, apologies if that was a bit rushed and all over the place, but you're just seeing the real side of landscape photography. Sometimes it is like that and just, before I get into anything, look at those clouds up there. They look really cool. Actually, I'm gonna run. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. I'm gonna run to that side of the stone circle and see if it's worth getting a composition with them clouds in because they look really cool. Right, so I brought the camera to the other side of the stone circles and I'm just trying to get a shot of these clouds. They're just incredible. By the way, I know there's all these sort of different names for clouds and cloud formations and if anyone knows what these are call, called, just from the B-footage B footage, or the photographs that I'm gonna show you, please let me know. Um, that's really interesting. It's also something else that I wanna try and learn a little bit more about. But yeah, um, I don't know if you can see that in the background, my bag's over there. I'm li literally just come to the opposite side of the circles. It's a little bit more difficult to shoot here because um, we're actually down below the circles a little bit. It was over there, we had a little bit of higher ground so we could kind of shoot down on the circles a bit more. So I'm just trying to combat that by having the tripod set up ridiculously high. It's like taller than me. It's over six foot at the minute. So um, just so I could try and get an angle down on the circles to accentuate them even more. But also, obviously, in a way that I'm still capturing a lot of the sky as well. Um, it looks pretty cool, you know. Um, it's something a bit different. Pretty much got the same setup on the front. I've got the um, three-stop ND grad filter there. And ISO 100, F11 again. Simple stuff. And one second exposure. Um, the composition is really, really cool. I've had to, because I'm a little bit closer to the circles, I've had to change my focal length to 18 millimeters. I actually thought that I was gonna have to leg it back to my bag and get the wide angle out, but this is just about working okay. I'm getting the whole of the stone circle in. One second exposure and that sky is looking gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my God, that looks so cool. It just like, I feel like I've been really, really lucky. Um, because like that sky is so ominous and foreboding it's they're just the best words to describe it almost a bit creepy and scary and it just it just is such a perfect contrast with what it is i'm photographing you know this is mysterious this is such a mysterious photograph it's a mysterious subject and the sky has just helped us to capture that emotion almost um absolutely fantastic you know what I might even go as far as saying I prefer that to the last photograph. I'll let you guys decide. Let me know what you think. I hope you like this one. So I am making the executive decision, of course. Um, 
to not take any more photographs and leave probably about 10 minutes before the sunset is gonna is due to happen which isn't something i would recommend but i just feel like them two photographs can't be bettered i really i'd like even if we got a burning red sky behind that circle now i don't think that's going to complement that as a subject as much as the last two photographs that i got where we got them beautiful stormy clouds and that gorgeous contrast between um, in the first photograph the gorgeous contrast between the two sets of weather front I don't think that can be topped so that's why I'm leaving early like I say I wouldn't recommend it um, anyway I've got a really cool adventure lined up um, which will probably be next month sometime so probably shouldn't mention it this early but I'd really love you guys to come with me on that one I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing for it it's going to be quite a big adventure so you know that's going to come in the near future i look forward to sharing that with you all and what an evening this has been class this has been what landscape photography is all about what adventure is all about um this has been one of my favorite shoots in absolute months and it's been a pleasure to have you guys along with me um also wanted to mention to you that prints are still available on my website um five limited edition prints they're selling fairly well probably better than i um, first imagined so it's a good thing of course but yeah i'd love for you guys to go and check them out that would be fantastic and above all thank you guys so much for watching and of course thank you for the support so i shall see you guys next week on the next adventure out mm -hmm.